Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge you need help with, we are here for you. We love hearing from you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those as well. Questions about ingredients, formulations, something you may have heard about, read about, something someone may have told you about nutrition, nutritional supplementation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a comment about our truth treatment products, which you could find at truthtreatments.com. If you have a success story, we love hearing those too. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order all your favorite Longevity products off their websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you'd like to speak to a real live human being, you can call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a perfect way to start a business with a $25 fee. You can get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you want. You can enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. And you can spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, all while you're making money earning thank you checks. And some folks are making a substantial amount of money by helping spread the word about the power of a good nutritional supplement program and the effectiveness of the longevity products. Call 866-735-2470 for more information or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our truth retinol 5% gel, truth transdermal C serum, truth transdermal C balm, and our truth omega-6 healing cream. I designed my omega-6 healing cream for burn patients when I was in my compounding pharmacy. It's now available to you if you have sunburn or rashes or broken skin, traumatized skin in any way. Our truth omega-6 healing cream is packed with vitamin C, also has cholesterol in it. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, emulsifiers, water, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, thanks for joining us again on The Bright Side. On our last program, we were talking about the relationship of salt to a healthy adrenal gland. We've been talking salt now for a couple of days. The myth of elevated salt, I consider it to be a myth of elevated salt. Now, I I shouldn't say that. If you have a problem with kidney functioning or adrenal functioning, your salt levels can get can get out of whack. And there's hidden hidden forms of sodium, of course. But for the most part, the body can handle salt. It's designed to handle salt. 
When you have too much salt, you just excrete it. That's basically what happens. And if you're craving salt, it could have more to do, uh, it could have a lot to do with adrenal health. The adrenal glands are our body stress glands. Between the adrenals and the kidneys, we have our two salt regulating organs. And the link between the adrenals, by the way, and salt intake is very important. Salt may be an adaptogen. It may be adaptogenic. An adaptogen is a, sub a substance that helps the body handle stress. Now, you may have heard of the term adaptogens in regard to herbs. There's several herbs that are said to be adaptogenic. That is, they can help the body handle stress. Ginseng is probably the most famous of the uh, adaptogenic herbs. Ashwagandha is a Ayurvedic herb that has been used for thousands of years in India. Like ginseng, it is a, said to be an adaptogenic herb. It's supposed to help us handle stresses. Rhodiola has been uh, in the news lately, at least in herbal news, as an adaptogenic herb. But as it turns out, plain old table salt, or even better, plain old Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt may be adaptogenic as well. It may help, uh, help us handle, help our adrenals handle the ups and downs of daily life. In a 2011 study from the University of Haifa in Israel, scientists showed that salt may help protect the body from excess stress and may be a substance that helps the body cope with adversity. In another study, this one uh, March 2009, published on Science Daily, researchers from the University of Iowa found that salt may be a natural antidepressant. All of this is to say that the demonization of salt, much like the demonization of cholesterol, the demonization of saturated fat, may be more about fashion and fad and bad science than it is good health advice. Our bodies need salt. Our bodies can handle salt. It's very difficult to ingest too much salt because when we're healthy, there's mechanisms in the body that regulate its concentration in the blood. When we're healthy, that's the key point. If we're not healthy, particularly if we're not healthy at the level of the uh, kidneys and the adrenal glands, our two major salt processing glands, and many of us are not healthy at that level, that's when, our, that's when salt becomes a problem. So the real, the real issue is kidney disease. The real issue is adrenal fatigue. That's where we need to be focusing, the kidneys and the adrenal glands. When our levels are, when we eat too much salt, we excrete more from the kidneys. When we're under stress, the adrenal glands will secrete specific hormones, aldosterone in specific, that will keep salt in the body. So if salt levels are too high, it may not be an issue of intake. It may be more about weak kidneys. Remember, 14% of Americans have chronic kidney disease and probably another 20 or 30% have, are on the way to chronic kidney disease. Only God knows how many people are under adrenal duress. And kidney disease is about blood sugar. Kidney disease is a sugar problem. And adrenal duress is about stress. And in this way, we got our triangle of disease. That's where the problem is. It's in the triangle. Always at the triangle. No matter what your health challenge is, go back to the three points. The digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal system or the adrenal thyroid complex. And that includes cardiovascular disease, and that includes hypertension. Even if it looks like it's high, high sodium intake, it's about the triangle. In the, in the case of sodium, you're looking, at elevate, uh, you're looking at sugar causing damage to the kidneys, and you're looking at elevated stress hormones, particularly aldosterone, out of the adrenal glands. Digestion, blood sugar, and stress via the adrenals and the thyroid. These three points underlie all health issues. And in this way, there are not 12,800 different diseases. There are no special diseases. This is the bottom line, everything I talk about on this program. There are no special diseases. There are no special diseases. Why don't they tell us this? Because we got, we got specialists. There's no specialist that's gonna tell you there's no special disease. That's how they make their living. We've got a, a medical system that's based on classification and categorization of what are basic generic bodily breakdowns. Categorize them and categorizing them and classifying them by where they appear on the body and what specific markers are going awry. It doesn't matter. The only reason we don't know this is nobody's telling us this because there's business interests. You wouldn't need 12,000, you wouldn't need specialists once we understand there's no, there's not 12,800 different diseases and we certainly wouldn't need thousands of different medications. Focus on how we process food, focus on how we process sugar, focus on how the body responds to stresses, physiological as well as psychological and that's it. 
All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll return right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We have search engines up. If you miss a program or want to review a program, just put the topic in, your specific topic in, in, into the search engine. You'll get the programs where we talked about various health topics. We've been on the air now for six plus years, so there's lots of good health information at benfuchsarchives.com and also brightsideben.com. If you want to purchase Longevity products, you can purchase them from brightsideben.com. Also, my blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and start a Longevity business at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. So, digestion, blood sugar, stress. Digestion, blood sugar, stress. The three points in the triangle of disease. These are the only three things that need to be addressed no matter what your health challenge is. It simplifies everything. You don't need a special protocol for multiple sclerosis. You don't need a special protocol for uh, eczema. You don't need a special protocol for Alzheimer's disease. You don't need a special protocol for any health challenge. You just backtrack, simplify, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, smarty. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple. That's called simplexity. Simplexity is the idea that underneath the most complex phenomena, you will find simple, basic building blocks. And this is not just some kind of airy-fairy idea. This is hardcore physics. It's called complexity theory. It says that the most complex structures can be built up out of the most simple, basic building blocks. Witness a computer, witness the web or the internet. The, the vast amount of information that is found on the web is all, all comes from zeros and ones, two digits, blinking on and off. Likewise in the body, everything in the body comes from cells op- opening and closing, firing and not firing, contracting and relaxing. It's all basically binary in the body. And when it comes to diseases, there's just three things that you gotta really address. Now, this is physiolo- This is from a physical standpoint, of course. There's also psychological components, and there's also emotional components and spiritual and mental aspects. I call it SMEP, spiritual, mental, and emotional and physical. But from a physical perspective, if you focus on your gut and you focus on your blood sugar and you calm the body down, all, health, all really effective health strategies calm the body down, you're going to get better. Disease is about the wrong stuff getting in and the right stuff not. That's it. The wrong stuff is getting into the body, the right stuff isn't. And it all manifests as digestive issues, blood sugar issues, and stress. And from there, we jump off to all of the 12,800 different special diseases. This idea that we need to restrict our salt somehow, salt restriction, in order to be healthy is just more doctor baloney, doctor posturing. And this low-salt diet, low-salt recommendation, suggestions to limit an essential substance in the body is not only reflective of biochemical ignorance, the biochemical nonsense of the medical model, but even worse, it's a diversion from the real cause of heart disease, the real cause of hypertension, the real cause, uh, all causes of all our health challenges, which is this fundamental triad, the three points in the triangle of disease. And when we do try to limit our salt intake, when we do try to restrict salt, when we do try to eat less than our bodies need, we're simply gonna crave more because the body ain't stupid. If the body needs salt, it's gonna make us go for salt. It's gonna make us crave salt, which is why the best way to deal with your salt cravings is to eat salt. Now, you don't wanna eat potato chips. You don't wanna eat French fries. You don't wanna eat processed fried foods that contain lots of salt. You don't wanna eat boxed and packaged foods that contain lots of salt. And guess what? There are lots of ways that salt is, at least sodium is snuck into foods. You know, Raisin Bran has uh, uh, some uh, 190, uh, 350 milligrams per cup of cereal. 
350 milligrams of, of, so, of sodium per cup. You can't taste it in Raisin Bran. There's 510 milligrams of sodium in roasted garlic, Classico's roasted garlic uh, uh, pasta sauce. You can't taste it. Uh, Kellogg's Eggo Buttermilk Pancakes, 580 milligrams of sodium. Now keep in mind, you only need two or, two or three grams of sodium. If you have three pancakes, you've, that's 25% like of your sodium needs for the day. Bean burgers, 700 milligrams of sodium. Heinz ketchup, 190 milligrams of sodium. V8 hot, spicy hot vegetable juice, 480 milligrams of, of sodium. Pepperidge Farm pumpernickel bread has almost 200 milligrams of sodium per slice. You can't taste them. They don't taste salty. This is really where the problem comes, comes from in terms of our ingestion. Is we're getting it snuck into our body and it's not activating our salt hot button. So the body doesn't know it's had too much salt or sodium, I should say. If we do try to limit our salt intake, we're just going to find salt super, super irresistible. We just won't be able to stop eating it or, or stop craving it. The drive for salt is our assurance that when we need salt, we're going to get it. No one craves salt if the body doesn't need it. And the shutoff point for salt intake is regulated by the brain. You'll know when you've had too much. Your brain's not going to let you get more salt unless it's sneaky, unless it's snuck in by processors, which is why you want to stay away from processed food. Something else very interesting happens when we intentionally deprive ourselves of salt. Under conditions of salt restriction, the brain's reward center, the part of our brain that's activated by something that we need, something important, something that the brain thinks is important, becomes, becomes sensitized. We have a reward center that assures that when we need something, we're going to get it. We become very responsive to the stimulation of getting something essential. So that when we're depriving ourselves of salt, we get this reward chemistry that's activated that makes us, compels us to go out and find salt. This, this reward center is the area of the brain, the part of our brain that makes us go out and do things that are important for our survival, or at least that it perceives are important for our survival. And it's evolved over millions of years to assure that when we need something, we go out and get it. And this reward center assures that when salt levels are too low, we are going to go out and get it. But what's really interesting about this reward center, about this activation of the reward center, is that there's cross reactivity. So that when we're deprived of salt, we're going to become addicted or we're going to be compulsed or we're going to have a drive for other addictive substances. In other words, once the reward center has been sensitized by salt deprivation, it's not going to just make us go out and find salt. It's going to initiate a drive for all rewards. That means under conditions of salt deprivation, we're going to be more likely to pursue anything that's a reward, including alcohol, including drugs, including opiates. It's like the relationship between the reward center and salt is the same as the relationship between the reward center and opioids. The same as the relationship, if you're trying to restrict yourself from salt, your brain's going to become more sensitized to opiates. You're going to be more craving, if you're prone that way, if you're addicted to opiates, you're going to be more prone to going towards opiates if you try to restrict yourself from salt. Both will make the brain go, yippee, I've gotten a reward. And we, we, when we deprive ourselves of salt, any of this yippee inducing substance will make the brain happy. Reading from the Journal of Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior, February 2006, uh, uh, quote, a history of sodium depletion has been found to potentiate the rewarding effect of amphetamines, meaning for those who are predisposed to salt deprivation, that's going to make them more likely to go for meth or speed or any other upper. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We're back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. It's our number. We do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about salt intake or salt restriction or if you've been to told to go on a low-salt diet or heart disease, hypertension, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, a common or success story, we have lots of lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised, we're recommended on the Bright Side. Please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team 
off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or by calling 866-735-2470. And please check out our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel made with vitamin C and our transdermal delivery matrix. And that's it. Just three basic ingredients in our Truth Retinol 5% gel because you don't need silicon, oil, preservative, fragrance, filler, wax, thickeners in your skin health product. And you don't need a lot of skin health products either. If you have an effective topical product, it's going to work on your eyes, it's going to work on your hands, or under your eyes, I should say, it's going to work on your hands, it's going to work on your toes, it's going to work on your butt, it's going to work on your face, because skin is skin. The silliness of hand creams and foot creams and eye creams and décolleté creams and wrinkle creams and whatever. They're all, it's skin is skin. It all has collagen. It all has skin cells. It all has moisture factors. And the only difference between skin on different parts of your body is the thickness of the skin. But the tissue is the same. Once, you, once we get that, we'll understand that we don't need a lot of skin health products. You only need for uh, your truth treatment products topically, a little aloe and coconut oil to cleanse. And by the way, I have a new cleanser coming out that's going to be follow the same strict criteria as my other truth treatment products. You don't need a lot of topical skin care. In fact, the less you put on the skin, the better, as long as it's nutriated, as long as it's vitamins, vitamin C and vitamin A, the two go-to ingredients for topical skin care, vitamin C and vitamin A. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Get to a couple stories here, and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010, and we do have lines open. From the journal Molecular Psychiatry, Alzheimer's disease might be a whole body problem. Oh, really? Hmm. Surprise, surprise. Alzheimer's disease, the leading cause of dementia, has long been assumed to originate in the brain. But researchers from the University of British Columbia and Chinese scientists indicate it could be triggered by breakdowns elsewhere in the body. Hello? I've been saying this for years. Alzheimer's disease is just arthritis of the brain. It doesn't matter where our disease shows up. It's all about the body. The body is a system. It's all connected. It's one unit. It's not like you can isolate specific areas of the body. It's not like you can treat a specific area of the body. It's not like a disease occurs in a specific area of the body. It's all the same system. Alzheimer's disease, they'll tell you, your brilliant neurologist, who's of course brilliant because he's a neurologist, will say, oh, it's amyloid plaques, and now we have vaccines against amyloid plaques. Really? Isn't there a disease called amyloidosis where you get amyloid plaques in your, arm, in, in your joints and you get amyloid plaques in your kidneys? Yes, amyloidosis or amyloid is just one of the ways the body uh, manifestation of a protective response. It's a sign the body's breaking down, so it sticks amyloid, which is like a strong protective fiber in those areas. Well, yeah, it accumulates in the brain when you have Alzheimer's disease because you've got damage in the brain. It's not aluminum, which a lot of people believe. It's not the amyloid, which now you have vaccines, drug companies working with vaccines for. It's deterioration of the brain. That's it. And there's no drug that can stop deterioration of the brain. There's no drug that can reverse deterioration of the brain. This is why people in the know understand that Alzheimer's disease is type 3 diabetes. Why type 3 diabetes? Because blood sugar accumulates in the brain, sugar damages tissue, and bingo, you get Alzheimer's disease or other dementias, or Parkinson's disease for that matter, which is the same thing. It's just occurring in a different part of the brain. This is such an important idea. It liberates us from the medical model. It liberates us from doctors. All right, from, uh, from the journal Cell Reports, study shows benefit of cal- less fat, more hair, younger skin. Study shows benefits from calorie-restricted diet. Calorie-restriction diets have been associated with health benefits, but their effects on the skin have not been previously demonstrated. Now researchers, uh, research conducted at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil showed that controlling calories help mice live longer, although it re- uh, reduces the reserves of fat and adipose tissue needed to keep the body warm. That means the less you eat, the more you're burning fat. To offset this effect of the diet, the skin of the mice stimulated fur growth and increased blood flow to warm the skin. That means you got more blood circulation to your skin when you eat less calories. Every single marker of health and every single marker of anti-aging and every single marker of health and beauty is upregulated, is improved by going calorie restricted. Folks, we eat way more food than we need. And I am not a foodie. I'm not not sitting here beating anybody up for how they eat, but I'm just saying that calories represent heat. The body doesn't like heat. Calor, heat. 
The body doesn't like calor. It wants to keep things just even. When we get too hot, the body has to do work to pull the temperature back down. And anything we eat makes the body hot. Now, I'm not saying don't eat, but I'm saying eat less. If we only ate when we were hungry, if we only ate when we absolutely needed to eat, and if we stopped eating when we were full or when we were satisfied, we would be so much better off from a health perspective. We would be so much better looking from a health persp- from an appearance perspective. And we would have so much less of a health crisis that we would have more time to do our, uh, and money and resources to do what we really love to do. You want to spend time digesting your food or do you want to spend your time dealing with illness? That's basically what it amounts to. You have precious resources in the body and those resources can be used to fight disease or to prevent disease or to anti-age or those resources can be used to handle the food that we're eating. What's it going to be? Seems more, it seems like I'd rather spend your precious nutritional resources living a good long life than digesting your McDonald's hamburger, whatever kind of foods that you eat. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see, uh, got somebody who's been ringing here for a while. I'm just going to go get this phone call. Welcome to the bright side, whoever you may be. How's, how's it going? Hello? Hey there. Okay, we got a bad connect. I think we got a bad connection. Okay, we got a, we got a bad connection. If you're if you can hear me, call back, and uh, and we'll get you first up when when you call back. I apologize for that. I'm not sure, not sure what happened. Go ahead, uh, let me just do one sto- one more story, then we'll take a commercial break and get your phone calls. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We do have completely open lines, so now's the time to get in if you want to give us a shout. Smoking may cause inflammatory bowel disease. A new study shows a direct effect of cigarette smoke on intestinal inflammation for the first time. This is uh, published in uh, the journal Frontiers in Immunology. Researchers in South Korea report that exposing mice to cigarette smoke resulted in colitis. Now there, if you want to talk about something that you want to eliminate from your lifestyle, if you want to stay healthy, if you want to live a long life, it's cigarette smoke. And by the way, Keeping in mind that a low salt diet activates the reward center, going low salt is going to make you more likely to become addicted to tobacco or to cigarettes. And, and by the way, smoking is smoking, whether it's marijuana or whether it's tobacco. And while marijuana may have some, some, a, a lot more health benefits than, than tobacco does, tobacco, is, I, I've never heard of any health benefits associated with smoking tobacco. There's lots of health benefits associated with smoking marijuana. But nonetheless, smoking is smoking. So if you're a pothead out there and you're, and you're smoking your, your pot, don't be under the illusion that somehow it's better for you than smoking tobacco. Smoking is smoking. And the body doesn't like smoke. In this case, the colon doesn't like smoke. And if you're dealing with Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel disease and you're smoking cigarettes, that may be something you want to consider. All right, we're going to take a commercial break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we're back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have lines open for you. I want to just found this article here. I want to read it real quick, and then we'll get your phone calls. This is from uh, Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior. I, I mentioned it uh, about a half hour ago here, but I just found the paper. A role for dopamine receptors in the cross-sensitization between amphetamine and salt appetite. The history of salt depletions has been found to potentiate the psychomotor as well as rewarding effects of amphetamine, which is also a dopamine uh, stimulator, dopamine agonist, as they call it. And this is just to say that when you're restricting your body of salt, you are going to crave other addictive substances. Now, one of the most important addictive substances that you're going to create crave is going to be sugar. That's right. The more salt, uh, the more you limit your salt intake, the more likely you are going to be to go for sugar, which is the problem. Not salt, sugar, not salt. Sugar, that's the real problem. And that is something that we want to limit. You know, there's no essential need for sugar. You can get, you can, your body can turn protein into sugar. There's no essential need for sugar. Your body can, you, and when, by sugar, I'm talking about by straight glucose. There's no essential need for dietary glucose, I should say. Obviously, you need glucose in the blood. But your body can turn protein into glucose. Your body can break up complex carbohydrates, complex sugars into glucose to have straight sugar. There's no necess- there's no, we don't necessarily need to have straight sugar. That's a, that's a, that's a, 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 a manipulated and a synthetic and artificial drive that we have because so much sweet stuff is available to us. 
You can get your sugar needs met from protein. You can get your energy needs met from fat. You don't have to have glucose in your foods. Salt, on the other hand, is an absolute essential substance, and without it, you're going to be in big trouble. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Dave in Michigan. What's going on, Dave? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, good morning, Ben. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. What's going on, man? Uh, well, a lot. Um, my daughter got hit by a car on October 11th. Oh, no. Oh, my Walking gosh. across the street in the crosswalk, a SUV hit her at 40 miles an hour. Oh, and my she's God. she's alive. <laughs> That's a miracle. Praise God. How's she doing? Oh, my God. Thank you. Um, she's doing pretty good. Uh, she's, she got out on the 27th. She's home with us. We're nursing her back to health. Pam had, you know, was taking her longevity stuff. She, she actually, in the hospital, in her room, on her table next to her bed, she had about 25 longevity products sitting there. Nobody messed with her. They let Good her. For they Good they for let her. her take everything she needed. Um, so she was just Dave. Dave. She was just yes. crossing the crosswalk, and a car going 40 miles an hour just went through and hit her. Yes. That's unbelievable. Yep. And the lady, the lady stopped, and she told the cops she had insurance, but then later found out she didn't. Oh, my God. I'm so yep. sorry to hear that, Dave. How old's your daughter? She's 26. Uh, and there's lots she should be this doing. This is her Wha third time that she's pretty much been brought back, you know, from death. Um, I mean, wow. she was saved from death this time. She didn't actually die, but uh, she has died before. And, She's had, uh, has she had a near-death experience? Did she tell you about yeah, that? Um, no, she doesn't remember. Um, okay. It, actually, she didn't remember at first, but so not. I don't think she had one of those, but um, she did. You know, she, as she was recovering, she started remembering. She does remember crossing the street. It was pouring rain. And she was in the crosswalk, and she looked, and the car was right there, and she tried to stop it with her hands, and, well, she got bashed backwards, and uh, it busted her leg in three places, and they put in uh, rod and screws hmm. against my wishes. All right, there's and lots well, There's lots she can do and that she should be doing. All right, let me give okay. you some ideas, okay? First of all, yep. protein. Get her on bone broth protein. As soon as possible. The sooner you can get her on all this stuff, the, the faster she's going to recover. So get her on bone broth protein. Uh, have her do. I mean, I don't know if they can. I don't know what you're allowed to do in the hospitals, but as soon as you well, can she's do. Home. Oh, she's home now. That's right. Yep, you said she's that. Home. Okay. So get start making her bone broth protein smoothies, and then do it uh, several times a day. Also, uh, crack an egg in there to up the protein value. Also, bone broth itself. In addition to bone broth protein, you get things in the bone broth itself that's not going to be that aren't is not going to be in the bone. Uh, that's not going to be in the bone broth protein powder. So both okay. the bone broth and the bone broth protein powder. I would also be doing aloe vera. Make sure she's doing digestive enzymes on an empty stomach to help s reduce the swelling. I'd also be doing vitamin K, maybe K2, uh, maybe 5,000 micrograms a day, vitamin K2. Uh, make sure she's doing mega doses of vitamin C. The only problem with the vitamin C is if she does too much all at once, she's going to uh, get some bloating and digestive discomfort, so be careful of that. Keep her on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all straight through, uh, as m all day long, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Make sure she's doing 12 to 15 of the ultimate EFA caps a day, vitamin E, uh, 400 international units a day. Also, so get her on high al uronic acid capsules, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. I would also be using glutamine powder, maybe a gram to two grams a day. Arginine powder, maybe a gram to two grams a day. MSM sulfur, a gram to two grams a day. The glucogel caps, uh, maybe nine to 12 capsules a day. Nox gelatin, in addition to the glucogel caps, just straight gelatin, or you can get collagen powder. That will also help. Uh, we're, we're trying to build the bone and connective tissue back up. And then also uh, a couple of things that will be helpful are connective tissue minerals like magnesium, maybe 2,000 milligrams a day. You'll get that in the osteo FX. And then a zinc, 50 milligrams a day, and balance that out with copper, 4 milligrams a day. There's a lot more you can do, but that's a great start for you. God bless you, Dave, and good luck with everything. I'll be One praying for your question, daughter and ben. thinking about her. Um, yes, yes, sir. Nightly essence for blood clots. Uh, I would be doing the nightly essence is great for the digestive system. It will help a little bit for the to help thin the blood. Natokinase. But if you want to, yeah, I was going to say if you really want to do that, get some straight natokinase. Okay. 
Okay. All right. And what about um, my wife had a hair analysis and she's got high levels of arsenic Get showing well, up. up. I don't know necessarily that I'm a big believer in hair analysis, but yeah, arsenic can be a problem. The best way to get rid of arsenic is to chelate it out. You can go all out and do intravenous chelation with EDTA, but there are supplements that also help chelate arsenic. Uh, things like selenium has chelating properties. Uh, vitamin C is a wonderful chelator. MSM sulfur can help, uh, can have some chelating action. Chlorophyll and algaes and um, uh, planktons and, and seaweed and that. Anything that's green and grows in the ocean, actually anything that's green will have some chelating properties as well. Zeolite and bentonite both will also support chelation and help pull some of that arsenic out of the body. Don't forget fiber. Arsenic is eliminated in the stool, so the more fiber you're doing, or the better your bowel movements, I should say, uh, and also probiotics too, uh, the better your bowel movements, that will help uh, eliminate arsenic from the body. All right, I want to get one more call in, Dave. Thank you so Thank much. You God so bless much, you, my man. friend. Good to talk to you, buddy. All right, that's terrible, terrible news. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Let's go to John in Oregon, John, uh, underwear guy. What's up, John? Get the last word today. Hey. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, this is just on cinnamon. Um, you Love mentioned stuff. Take, doing cinnamon a lot, but I understand that there's two kinds of cinnamon. Is there any difference? Yes, as to how yes there, are t there are two kinds of cinnamon. Don't go for the cheapo kind. Actually, the two kinds of cinnamon, they call them uh, Ceylon cinnamon and uh, Cassia cinnamon. Have you heard those terms? Uh, yeah, somebody was telling me about it the other day. Yeah, there's two, there's two major kinds of cinnamon: Ceylon cinnamon and cassia cinnamon. Uh, Ceylon is the really is the good stuff. Cassia, you got to be a little bit careful of. Uh, I go, I always go with Ceylon. The Ceylon, and that's by the way, C E Y L O N. The Ceylon cinnamon uh, is a little pricier than the cassia cinnamon, uh, but uh, for the most part, uh, the Ceylon is is really the good stuff. That's the way you, they, the way you want to go. C E Y L O N. The cash is the cheapo stuff. It's the kind you find in the grocery store. Uh, it is has a little kind of a stronger flavor than the Ceylon cinnamon, but the Ceylon is the good stuff. C E Y L O N. They grow that, that's grown in Ceylon, which is actually Sri Lanka, uh, and it is an amazing, amazing sw uh, spice. Aside from the fact that it tastes absolutely delicious, uh, it is wonderful for helping you stabilize your blood sugar. It's got those polyphenols, which can be great for your skin and for your eyes. Uh, if you do do the cassia cinnamon, just don't overdo it. The cassia cinnamon, the cheapo cinnamon, has a higher amount of something called cinnamaldehyde. Cinnamaldehyde is the, act, is the, is the stuff that uh, gives cinnamon its flavor. Uh, and uh, cassia cinnamon, C-A-S-S-I-A, -S -S -I -S -S cinnamon, uh, has a lot of cinnamaldehyde. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. I go Ceylon, C-E-Y-L-O-N. All right, John? Okay, helps, thank man. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for calling. And thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all kinds of good health information and all the longevity products. Love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can join the Bright Side Ben team, and you can sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And please check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.